Discovery Weekly. Welcome to Discovery Weekly, a bonus show from the podcast Discovery Show that's all about everything else we discover throughout the week. I'm Zach. I'm Kirk. And I'm Matt. And I discovered something kind of awesome called Eat the Invaders. And so this is a website that is all about invasive species, what they're doing, and then how you can eat them to help prevent <laughs> them from like destroying your like, ecology. And so it's, I love the premise. It's so stupid, but it's smart in a somewhat yeah, in the same way. Uh, it's really funny. And I actually saw this because I cannot, I'll have to look it up and it'll, there's going to be a lot of show notes um, on this one. I'm going to put all these articles because it's honestly, I think it's really interesting. What? But I saw this, um, it was a German chef who basically was using, and it sounds like um, Louisiana crawfish are like an invasive species in Germany, which is weird That's to think about. Interesting. I've never, Did not I've know never that. thought about like the American ones that had like gone elsewhere. But he basically uses all the invasive species at his restaurant for kind of the same premise. But there is a website called Eat the Invaders. And there is um, the editor in chief of it is Joe Roman, who sounds like a really interesting guy. Um, and he's a conservation biologist, author and researcher at the Gund Institute for e Ecological Economics at the University of Vermont. And he kind of started this movement called invasivorism, which is essentially if it's invasive, eat it like fight back. So instead of like, cause throughout history, there's like a random bug that appears and people would like introduce another bug that eats that one. He's like, it's the same premise except we're the bug. And so just go eat the stuff that's causing problems. And so the front page of this website just has all of these invasive species and so instead of just going through all of them, I'm going to pick one that's here in Florida and it has started happening, actually. And it's the lionfish and they're beautiful fish. They have those crazy spikes looking coming off of them. They're poisonous, but they're also invasive and they're all around Florida. And if you leave them, they literally can kill all of the fish that are native there because they don't have any predators here. And they're also like really good predators. And they will also eat coral. So they're destroying our coral reefs. They're killing all the native fish population and they're poisonous. But it's basically open season on them. You can go, apparently people like to do spear fishing to get them. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is remove their top like spikes the right way and you're fine. Other than that, it's just fish. So they're not poisonous. They're venomous. You know, they have venom in their spines. And then on here, they have a whole thing, a whole breakdown of what these fish are doing and how big of a problem they are. And then on the right hand side, they have beer battered lionfish with dill tartar sauce mm. and they have <laughs> like lemon pepper lionfish. So the whole thing is just this kind of mix between like biology and then just here's how you can eat them. There is one of these that is disturbing I had some to fish me. tacos that had lionfish and they were so good. So uh, good. it's it started to be a thing here where there's food trucks and things that exclusively do lionfish because you can just go get it for free. You could just go spear fishing, get as many as you can possibly get because it's all good to get them out of here and just cook them up. The one hmm. that freaks me out though is called a nutria. Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's it's like a giant rat. It's like between beaver and rat. It's huge. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a raccoon rat. sized water rat. And I feel like I would be uh, and it could just be my my brain not being used to eating like rodents, but that would freak me out a little bit, I think. Hmm. But yeah, just a really cool website that is a very strange idea. And like I said, there's going to be a lot of articles in the show notes because uh, one of the other things that kind of came off this, a lot of times I just kind of go down a rabbit trail. Like as, as soon as I see something interesting, I'm just like, oh, that's weird. Well, what about this? And then I'll just look that up too. And so I just go down this whole thing. And there's a whole question of could you get americans on board for this one so like some of these things aren't as appetizing as just a fish and so like would you be fighting against culture and how people are thinking how do you get people on board and then there's another side of it that there's some people that think that if you make something that's invasive a delicacy then there's incentive to keep it around <laughs> you know instead of being like destroying yeah, the guess. population if everybody started to love lionfish 
that people would start trying to grow lionfish here and then huh. you kind of def- it'd be self-defeating. But there's, it, that's what I'm saying is there's a lot of stuff. I don't want to get into all of it because it would <laughs> take a long time to go through all of it, but really cool articles. So they will be in the show notes for you to check out. Awesome. What on there do you think looks like the tastiest? Oh, I would, I would maybe you haven't had. Some, uh, oh yeah. I would demolish some lionfish for sure. There's a bunch of vegetables, you know, you don't have to be like terrified of it. Oh necessarily. yeah. Vegetables. I didn't uh, even think about vegetables. Uh, <laughs> wild pig, Asian shore crab, armored catfish. There's, and there's like a Chinese carp that's really bad too, but like watercress is one. And that's hmm. a, that's a, a really nice one. Nutria is the one that freaks me out a little bit. I, do you see the picture on that page though? My God, that looks good. <laughs> what, they of have what? a cooked version of it? Yeah. Oh, of Nutria? Let's oh take my a, let's God, take a look. that looks good. It's like when we were in Peru, the uh, guinea pig is like a delicacy there. Um, and You ate a guinea pig? I, I didn't. I could never find it anywhere, which was weird. But it was like a national dish or something. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what it tastes like. Uh, it's probably, yeah, I mean, I've had squirrel, so it probably tastes like that. I would yeah. think. Is it a little gamey or something? Like no, a little? I no? mean, no, not really. It's the dark meat. It's very. Uh, oh. There's no fat, like zero fat. It's like mm. a rabbit, you know, rabbits the same way. There's. I think people have like starved from eating only rabbit because there's yeah. not enough. Uh, <laughs> No, like in all your, the nutrients. What is in it? And your brain and your organs need fats to survive. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's not enough fats, which the stuff you need from the fats you don't get. So, yeah. Anyway. Huh. Anyway, uh, I have a discovery that I just thought was hilarious. I found it. It's a really old article because it actually is acting like it's new the way that it's written. But it's a 13 year old article. So that's why. Uh, but this was a movie that was going to be made. And luckily it wasn't, or maybe it should have been. I don't know. Mm. I'll let you guys be the, the, the judges. Pride and Predator to give Jane Austen an extreme makeover. So this is, <laughs> this was, uh, I didn't, first of all, I didn't know that Elton John had a movie company, but he does. Hmm. Um, I didn't know that either. Or at least did 13 years ago. <laughs> I don't know how it would have changed. A lot could have changed. Status is now. Knows? Um, but says the new film from Elton John's Rocket Pictures will have the seven foot extraterrestrial give the characters from Pride and Prejudice something more immediate to worry about than making advantageous marriages. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this is basically, the weirdest premise. Already. Were, and this is a really short uh, discovery, but it's just hilarious that I think that this was ever even considered. Um, and this was before, you know, that that was kind of a thing of like crossovers, like Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter or whatever, which me and Zach watched um, a little bit of that. It didn't oh, hold up. It is not it good. It was really bad. It is <laughs> not, not that good. it was good the first time, but I thought it was like fun to watch. I will say the that guy looked around. like Abraham Lincoln, which was weird. He does yeah. look like it, what I would imagine young Abraham Lincoln looked like, but the movie's stupid. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Uh, have you guys seen FDR American Badass? <laughs> no. no. That's a good one. Maybe is it? Yeah, it's in the same vein of that. But anyway, I don't want to derail too much. But I, I love I also love the name Pride and Predator. I think it's really good. That really is good. a solid title, but it's a weird premise in general because it's just so off tone. You know, <laughs> it's a very yeah. dramatic, very dramatic story. And then just to throw Predator in, it's going to be it's going to be weird. Why and no, none of them could deal with the Predator. Are you kidding? <laughs> The original Predator is like a bunch of dudes that were clearly doing steroids in the 80s. The Governor, Jesse the Body Ventura, Governor. Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers. But there is one quote in here from one of the guys that was going to produce it. Um, David Furnish. It says, it felt like a fresh and funny way to blow apart the done-to-death Jane Austen genre by literally dropping this alien into the middle of a costume drama where he stalks and slashes to horrific effect. <laughs> so they, it was going to be like a slasher movie based in the story of Pride and Prejudice. I'm just saying, I mean, it might be That's funny, great. but like Kira Knightley can't defend herself against the Predator. I'm not, I'm not convinced she could do it. <laughs> she was in that movie, right? The, yeah, no, the the, movie? she's in this, she's in a picture side by side next to the Predator in this, <laughs> in this article. It's amazing. Well, that's weird. I'm glad they didn't make that movie. <laughs> Um, so 
Speaking of uh, film, getting a lot of buzz, a lot of noise around 13 years ago. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I have actually discovered something pretty awesome that has helped me sleep. As weird as that sounds. Um, but it's called the 12 hour sound machine. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but you can no. find it's on Spotify. It's on all these things. It this guy or this person, I guess I don't know exactly who it is, um, made all of these noise machines available on all of these different things. And there are so many different different types of noise machines. I had no idea. Like you, we all know white noise, obviously, right? Like yeah. a fan or uh, I don't know, static or something. The ocean. The ocean. A river. Yeah. A creek. And, rain. And here's the awesome thing that I found. I actually stumbled across it because I was like, "What? What do I do to drown out bass noise? Like, what do I do?" And I, I, someone was like, get noise canceling headphones and play brown noise. I was like, brown noise. The only brown noise I know is the one that supposedly <laughs> makes you defecate. Um, <laughs> but I put this on and my God, I, you cannot hear any bass under it. Uh, but it's this low register kind of hum thing. Mm. It reminds me of like a David Lynch style movie, like atmosphere, you know, where it's a palpable noise. But it's also not like super loud. Like I, we put it on and watched The Power of the Dog. And after a point, you didn't even notice it, even though the neighbors next door were blasting music. I was wondering where the why you needed the brown noise. Yeah, I was, yeah. was coming in. Yeah, stupid well, neighbors. It, the yeah, I mean it's nonstop. <laughs> and right now, you might even hear a dog barking outside, right outside the window. Anyway, um, but it's it's awesome because you don't. I'm just playing it through my speakers and not through headphones and it drowns it out, which is crazy because usually you have to like stuff your ears with stuff to uh, avoid noise. But there's also something called pink noise, which I've played, but it just reminds me of white noise. Um, I haven't gone into like exactly what they all are, but brown noise drowns out bass and it's super helpful. And it's, it had, I've like been listening, blasting it uh every night and it's like way better than a fan because it gets that low register and this guy or this person has go to uh 12 hour sound com. i think is what his pot uh, but i, I just want to read this just because i, I, I want to shout it out because i've definitely been using it for 25 additional sound machines, and he does have all sorts of interesting ones, bamboo water fountain sound, blah, 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 industrial fan sound machine. Hmm. Um, subscribe, you can subscribe to blender. them. Yeah, <laughs> blender, uh, nails in a blender. I wonder what is the upper <laughs> limit of what you could actually like. <laughs> could you train yourself to fall asleep with like a blender going? Maybe. I, that'd be interesting. But basically, this guy does this totally... Uh, free of charge basically because if you think about it it's 12 hour sound machine with no loops or fades so per play like <laughs> people probably don't listen to this in full uh, ever you know because it's 12 hours <laughs> um so I mean, unless they put it on and go to sleep and wake up and it's off i will say that i That's am true. a firm believer Although, in that to go to sleep. sleep more than 12 hours never mind uh, <laughs> yeah. that would be a long time <laughs> sorry yeah it'd be a long time but you know what more power to you if you can. Like, you do geez. you. 13 hours of sleep. Go get it. But it's awesome because um, they provide this uh, on Spotify and stuff. And they just have their Venmo and stuff on there if you want to donate. It's one of those things, which is really awesome. So check that out if you have no, trouble I already, sleeping. I, I literally just looked it up because I want to find some good sounds. I want to find some good sounds that will help my son sleep because that's something that... <laughs> It really you know, does. It, it helps me for sure. You know, yeah. I wanted to, I feel like I got too used to like the complete silence and then mm -hmm. I would wake up too easily. So I wanted mm -hmm. to break it up a little bit. Yeah. And, it, but it's a catch 22 because then it's hard to sleep without the noise. Right. Yeah. I but if it's something like, like that's on Spotify, you've always got your phone no matter where you go. Right. Turn that thing, turn that yeah. baby on while it's on charge next to your bed at, on the, at the Airbnb you're at. And it's the same, just like home. You know what I do at home though? I went to Goodwill and I got an old clock radio 
and I listen to NPR on a sleep timer all night jazz. And then like the only talking in it is NPR talking. So it's like, and in today's news we have, and so it's like, I never, I go out like in minutes. I'm just in a coma. It's amazing. It's just been very nice for my like mental well being on top of not having to listen to my neighbors blast their music. Cause it's just like, Whoa, it's just, it just <laughs> exists in my house now. The brown because, noise washes over him and gives him true. peace of spirit. It's amazing. So check that out if you have trouble sleeping or have loud neighbors. The following is the definition of the word cretin. Offensive now. Late 18th century fusion from Latin and French usually used as a derogatory slang term for someone perceived as being stupid, foolish, or incompetent. Also, meaning someone who enjoys conversations regarding movies, comics, TV, video games, nerd culture, pop culture, tiki drinks, theme parks, anime, money, bidets, counterculture, board games, card games, the motherfucking Batmobile, and we fight over championship belts, baby. <clears throat> Excuse me. Join Jay, Bob, and Corey for all these topics on the Cretans Guild podcast, somehow part of the Podfix network. The Cretans Guild podcast can be found on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and YouTube, amongst other places. Do not listen while operating heavy machinery. Our moms think we're cool. Offer void in Kentucky. Notify your doctor if laughter exceeds four hours. So, I don't know. Did you guys ever get into Star Trek? Mm, nope. I started mm-hmm. watching all the movies back to back and oh, then God. realized that's, I didn't really like them. That's <laughs> maybe the worst possible way to do it. Yeah, just, I know. Just so you know. <laughs> I learned pretty quickly when I, I mean, told everybody this. Don't get me wrong. This. The whale one's funny. <laughs> Wrath of Khan is good. Um, but mm-hmm. no, that's it's not great. Mm-hmm. But the reason I ask is because I always thought the idea of a replicator was the coolest thing I'd ever heard of where they don't have like food stores anymore. And they essentially just walk up to the thing and it says tea, Earl Grey hot, and they gives you tea and you walk away. They have done the stupid version of that and we can get it now. <laughs> There's something called Canna One that is a molecular drinks printer and it claims to make anything from iced coffee to cocktails with one machine. And so this is a brand new thing. They're just now taking pre-sales on it. But uh, there's a quote from the article on Engadget. The idea is that using a single cartridge of flavorings, the machine can mix one of thousands of different beverages, including juice, soft drinks, iced coffee, sports drinks, wine, and cocktails. With Canna One, which is designed to sit on a kitchen countertop, you'll be able to select a drink from a wide range of beverage types and brands using a touchscreen. You can customize the levels of alcohol, caffeine, and sugar, um, and then you can make it so alcoholic and caffeinated drinks can be locked behind a pen. No beer for you, Johnny. (laughs) <laughs> um, but they have teamed up with beverage, beverage brands from around the world and created their own concoctions. And so what the premise is, is that, and this, I'll just throw out, this is another quote from here. It uses a novel microfluidic liquid dispense technology to mix the beverages. And at least 90% of what we drink is water with flavorings, sugar, and alcohol added in. And so the premise is by studying all these different drinks at the molecular level, they can just make them. They have like the base components in there and they will just make you whatever you want. What? I, uh, okay. I have lots of questions. I know you don't have answers. I, I probably article. don't have the answers. <laughs> but like it's not, this isn't flavors are not like the color wheel where you can just mix some primary colors or together. And it, it, I don't think so. But you don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that you don't just have a few different flavors in there and you mix them the right way and you've got... Oh, I don't think it's like three things that can make everything. I think that they just have looked at... Because, and this is something we've started to see with like... Because we, <laughs> at work, we do like the hemp testing. And all these terpenes are in different things across the like flavor profile. So like you can have... You can have in weed, you can have lemonine. But that's also what makes lemon peel and oranges smell the way they do. Mm-hmm. And so I wonder if there's like component parts they kind of fit all together. You know, I don't know. Why are you giggling, Matt? What is happening? I just had this very... What's happening in that brain? This very vivid (laughs) image of like the replicator is about the size of a scientist and there's a scientist inside of a box. (laughs) (laughs) 
I knew just, there was something stupid yeah. happening inside your brain. I could see it on your face. <laughs> and they're like, watch this. He can make anything. And there's just a scientist who like gets a chit pulled out at, at like a restaurant. And then it's like, okay, one medium Coke. And he's just like, <laughs> Look, look, look. Here's your coke, sir. Oh, he's <laughs> gonna talk like, like a robot too. Yeah, I love that better, like, actually. No, that would make replicator. it replicator feel futuristic. <laughs> I love you, replicator. I love you too. <laughs> Here's the weird thing about this whole situation. I mean, if it could get weirder, that it's kind of a subscription thing. So what? you pay for it on a per drink basis. Each will cost between twenty nine cents and three dollars. Though Canna claims. The average price will be lower than bottled beverages at retailers. The system also requires sugar Better and be. spirits cartridges, both of which are replaced automatically, and a CO2 cylinder. So basically, you buy the thing, everything's replaced automatically, but you pay per drink. What does it mean? What do you mean by replaced automatically? Like I'm they guessing send they send you, you replacements? It's probably connect to the uh-huh. internet, and when you start to run low, they mail you a new one. They just right in there. So my question is like, does it clearly have the molecular makeup of the same drink or is it just tasting like the the drink? You know, that is my main question after reading this is I want like, I want to pick like the most common drink, you know, something that you know, the flavor of like back and forth. And I want to see if it like, if it, cause that's, I'm just hopeful that you push Dr. Pepper on there and you drink it and you're like, Oh my God, what is happening? There's well, no way like Coke. Coke has like three different parts of the recipe. No one person even knows what all the freaking components are like this machine's not going to get it right. There's no way. But also, I mean, the way that soft drinks work, though, is they have that little packet of like the mix that then the water shoots out. So I, I that soda to me, I understand. But like having a machine that can make soda and then on top of that, make you a coffee from the same materials. And, and like, an orange juice. Right? It's like, it's not actually Ow. orange juice. It would just taste like orange right. juice in my It brain. would not actually be orange juice. It did not come from an orange. But it would, would <laughs> that's what I, okay. Well, my, my dumb question was pretty much answered. Of course it couldn't be an orange <laughs> juice. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny too. That's kind of that same premise you had was like, oh, orange juice, hold on one second. You see an orange pop in there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He reaches out the back. He reaches out. Arm. <laughs> like you see feeling around on the counter. Oh, there it is. It pulls it oh, back that's in. a lemon. Puts it back. <laughs> but oh, it's so stupid. the can of that's one wild. will cost four ninety nine for the first ten thousand orders. Rising five dollars? To- Sweet. Nope. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> oh. And then rising to seven hundred and ninety nine dollars after that. And they're expecting a short a short. Start shipping, <laughs> start shipping the machine in early 2023. So get yours now if you want to see what it tastes like. I really just want somebody rich that I know to get one so I can go try it and then I'll be done. I've seen yeah. those coffee shops that they do that, like that foam on top. It basically prints a picture of, you know, like the foam. Oh. Have you seen those? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, what? It's basically a printer, but it's a printer of foam or milk. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it works. That Milk seems printer. Like, yeah, that Milk seems I've seen, I've seen people like have like their faces on their lattes, and I'm like, I don't know why you do that, but okay, that's neat ish. Mm-hmm. Anyway, speaking of stupid, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we could use that segue for every single one. <laughs> I found an amazing, crazy, ridiculous. Florida man story. Florida man is back. It's time to talk about Florida man. But this story is so crazy. And so like, there's so many twists and turns that I just got to read it. So you guys can just buckle up and enjoy the ride. Cause this, this is going to be a ride. This is from the villages news, by the way. So oh, God. You, can't get, you can't get more Florida than the no. villages. Oh, God. <laughs> and first of all, I can't put all of this, on, all of this on us because the villages is everyone from everywhere. That's like their retirement Mecca. Yes, it's also its own state, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what happens in the villages stays in the villages. Especially because STDs. When you come in there, you're going to die anyway. Yeah. So no one leaves. No, you don't leave. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, I would love to see this statistic of people leaving in the villages and like, you know what? This place isn't for me. 
Let's I, I wonder move. if I wonder that would if be funny if that would be their like in their ad campaign. It's like no one leaves the villages because they love it so much. Like, Honestly, no, they, they I'm, all I'm die picking there. up another amazing horror movie idea. It's like nobody leaves the villages. And that's yeah. it. Anyway, let me get into this story because right, it's right, ridiculous. Right. Um, a resident of the villages free on bond in a knife attack landed back behind bars after stealing a village's public safety department vehicle on an emergency call. So this guy has to live like near the villages because he's not the age requirement to he live. He's not in villages, the villages material. He's 32. So he's you're younger than us. Jesse Charles Webb. 32 and reportedly w- stole the emergency vehicle Wednesday afternoon while fire department personnel were on an active medical call at the Santa Fe Surgical Center on County Road 466. The stolen vehicle, smaller than a conventional fire truck, by the way, it's just one of those like ambulances, is what it is. There's a picture of it. But they try to explain it, but it's just an ambulance. You know how like the fire trucks have ambulance things too? Yeah, fire rescue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the, this is the crazy thing. It was the third vehicle that afternoon that's stolen by Webb, who was released in February on his own recognizance from the Lake County Jail. Webb, who was arrested in 2019 after stealing a community watch vehicle in the villages, initially stole a private electrical company bucket truck from extra space storage on County Road. So the first thing he did is he stole a bucket truck. So a tr- like a, a cherry picker, the ones that like you yeah. fix light poles with and stuff. It, it, which triggered a pursuit by law enforcement. Not Webb. a very fast one. Those things can't go fast, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> so like he, ends up, he ends up ditching the bucket truck and was on the run when he attempted to climb a fence near. See, this is where the story just it gets, it gets crazier. You're like, can it get crazier? Yes. Uh, near an apartment townhomes. He dropped a small dog in a backpack, which what? contained his identification. Wait. <laughs> so uh-huh. clearly he had a dog with him. That's what I'm saying. The story didn't just says he dropped a small dog. <laughs> so he tried to run. So he stole a bucket truck with his dog and backpack. And then he tried to run with his dog and backpack. And then he tried to climb a fence, dropped both of <laughs> Both his dog oh, and the backpack I and his he, ID. I thought you meant he abandoned the dog. I was like, what a dick. You no, I like, think you just he, leave your dog. No, he grabbed him and he just couldn't take him over the fence with him. <laughs> In his process of trying to scramble over the fence, he dropped him. Um, he continued running to nearby recreation plantation. Interesting. Where he found a maintenance golf cart which had a key in the ignition. So then he steals a golf cart. Can this guy steal slower vehicles? Is there any slower uh, vehicles possibly steal? He drove the golf cart to the Santa Fe Surgery Center where he spotted the village's public safety department vehicle, which had responded to a medical emergency. Webb got into the fire department vehicle and continued to flee from law enforcement. Um, it's just a crazy story about no, this guy stealing three different cars. Most cars you can steal in one chase like what if somebody just kept going like six cars and he's like this car's stupid i'm switching again because like three different ones and none, uh, the problem is none of those were fast the golf cart they're probably just driving right next to him like with a window down like get out of the golf cart stop <laughs> <laughs> they're just running next to him it's like sl- get out of there you <laughs> idiot <laughs> please stop <laughs> well oh that's man. the best florida man story because it's just asinine and you don't really know what the point of it was really because he was there a point was he just stealing cars there's no, there's no given reason as to why he's just stealing he all just, these random cars he that he just finds watched, he just watched gone in 60 seconds but he didn't have yeah. a lot to work with <laughs> playing grand theft auto or something instead, yeah. of, instead of plane trains and automobiles it was uh but Bucket trucks, bucket golf, truck, carts, golf cart, and ambulance. And, uh, ambulance. Yeah, it does feel a lot like Grand Theft Auto. If you guys it have does. played it, it's you walk around in the city and you're like, I wonder if I can steal that. And literally, <laughs> somebody stopped at a stoplight and you're like, Get out of there, idiot, yeah. and take their car and drive off. Well, you this drive Florida. Yeah. yeah, he probably was on meth, but loves playing Grand Theft Auto, and he yeah. just started playing real life Grand exactly. Theft Auto. Exactly. You know, he was playing the game. You drive by a thing and you're like, Oh, a fire truck. I wonder if you can steal that. Oh, Apparently, turns out yes. I can. Oh, I never wondered that about golf carts. I already knew that was possible because oh, yeah. it's not a good vehicle to steal. <laughs> They'll find great. you real quick. They'll find you real quick. And that brings me to my, uh, I discovered something on Amazon, but it's also just a great discovery. Um, of course, we're going to go through the reviews. Uh, but 
this is the Queen James Bible. And you mean I, King James, right? Uh, the Queen James Bible. Oh, this is very funny. The um, Amazon uh, listing, the very first things in the description of this is a gay Bible. Oh, God. Which oh. is so great. I love that they named it the Queen James Bible. <laughs> Because oh, I, I do love that they named it that. This is that going to enrage funny. people. Oh, Pretty yes. Great. So, yeah, as you might I imagine. I can feel the anger uh, <laughs> just from. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, after going through, because I actually Google what are the, what are the worst rated prod- products on Amazon? Of course, this is up there because of all of that. But it's pretty awesome. It's actually it's a, a Bible that addresses the homosexuality in the Bible that everybody gets up in arms about. Um, and they interpret it to mean it doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with it. So who cares? Um, so it's, it's pretty great. Love it. The, one of the taglines is you can't choose your sexuality, but you can choose Jesus. Now choose a Bible too, <laughs> which is they, pretty they, great. This is, I, I will be honest with you. I am very intrigued to see what the changes were because I, I'm sure we've talked about it on the show. Kirk and I were both brought up very Christian. So we right. were definitely familiar with, with all of it. And so I'd be very interested to see what it is because yeah, I'm starting to see these uh, comments and they're exactly what, what I thought they were going right. to be. Like a lot of quoting revelation. <laughs> <laughs> always you know. a good sign <laughs> but uh, there were a few of them that I wanted to uh, specifically address but I am also sort of like I after going into this this uh, concept more and hearing more about it it's like supposedly bare, like mentioned once and like barely and it's not even <laughs> technically homosexuality or anything like that. It's just like a very specific thing that it mentions. So it would be great if it was just the exact same Bible, except that. <laughs> That's what different. it looks like. Honestly, I'm looking at their breakdown of what it is, and it seems like that. If it was, people would still react this way. That's exactly. what I'm saying. No, 100%. The, the well, one star reviews are quick twitch, like just enraged yeah. response. It's not any kind of logical anything. Yeah. This they one, didn't read the Bible. They didn't read the Queen James. I, I must say, I this is this might be my favorite bad review of an obvious you know idiot um but i will not buy this product again a <laughs> why would you even if it was a bible you liked what are you gonna buy another bible <laughs> like <laughs> um i will not buy this product again i did not like it and i threw it in the trash okay i prefer the king james bible forever <laughs> <laughs> that- but okay. no, literally, I see in the in the notes here. Well, in the their like notes, they changed eight verses. That's what it is. There's right. eight verses in a book of thousands, and they edited those eight verses in a way that makes homophobic interpretation impossible. They changed eight versions, so that person threw a Bible that is mostly just a Bible in the trash. <laughs> yeah. They should feel bad. They so should feel funny. real bad about it. Uh, if if I could leave zero stars, I would have. <laughs> this is not God breathed. This is nothing but lies from Satan. And that that uh, review is titled "Run." Don't even think about adding this to your cart. <laughs> Man, some of these are some of these reviews are like five to six or seven paragraphs long. It's pretty funny. There's one that's huge and this guy's like, okay, one star. And he's like, okay, so I'm not one of these Bible thumping idiots. And then goes on to basically express that he is. (laughs) And then at the end, he's like, by the way, I'm not a practicing Christian. It's like, what are you, what is this bed that you made? Like, come on now. No. And that is a, that is a wall of text (laughs) from Mr. As a libertarian and terrible, (laughs) terrible start to a, to a thesis that you're writing here. Cause it's a ridiculous wall of text for sure. That that's definitely how you're going to put people off of reading anything you wrote. As a libertarian. Yeah. Star reviews. (laughs) I know. uh, But it was funny because coming across it and then it's actually kind of cool. So uh, go, go buy it. (laughs) I'm not even whatever. I'm not religious at all, but 
There you go. Buy it no, anyway. I'm, I, I'm genuinely cur- uh, like curious. Mainly, and I knew the reaction was going to be this way. Yeah. It's just people are going to freak out about it. But, well, that's an interesting one. I had no idea that existed until right now. I didn't either. I never thought it could for some reason. You know what? Question. You know what, what? Can you leave a review without buying something? I no, don't know. Right? You, you might have been able to before. Because that means that all these people bought it, but they knew what they were no, buying. No, it's let me write a review. I know. Oh, it is? Oh. It's, you, you are able to write a yeah, review I, without... I clicked, okay, that's I clicked stupid. write a review. So they, yeah, that's, there's no way they bought this. Because that's yeah. what I'm saying. These are mainly people that you can tell are just mad about that it exists. You know what I'm wondering? If they haven't somebody, looked at it. Some like talking head that mm, is... A radio it, host or something? Yeah, somebody that's <laughs> yeah. in their wheelhouse said something about this just to get general outrage. And it, it worked, obviously. But... I'm wondering if that's what it is because I I've never heard of this, you know, like it's not something that this isn't like on the New York times bestseller list right now or something. <laughs> Matt, Matt just found the worst rated Amazon products. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I also just wanted to point out that I don't know if this is the same for every Bible you can buy on Amazon, but <laughs> the author is God. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it is. I, I have to look now. I'm just going to do King James because that's the, that might be the funniest thing about that and entire technically thing. That's to not, me. Technically, that's not right, anyways. But it I is mean, funny. Matt, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to list forty other men? Like it's that's well, this one, this yeah. King James one says Christian art publishers, <laughs> which they're taking a lot away from God with that. They should be careful with that. I think the Bible says mm-hmm. something about that. Yeah, that's a that's a bit of a copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, Lord. I see a lot of uh, Christian art publishers as does authors here. But yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a, that is wild. Pretty fun. Well, that's a very different kind of discoveries that we've had this week. So we hope you enjoy that. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Me too. (laughs) Yeah. And on next episode, you can expect us coming back, bringing the fire to all you party people out there. We're going to have a blast, a boom, a regular old wacky time. Next all week. here. On next week. Discovery the Weekly. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, I almost, I almost said the podcast discovery show. And remember... But discover the show <laughs> weekly. <laughs> show, discover weekly. This part's getting cut, but bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. This was a podcast from the Pod Fix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com.